Okay, today we're doing intro to trig trigonometry, the tangent ratio. After this lesson, you should be able to successfully find and use trig ratios and write triangles. These are your and can I can statements um, for after this lesson. I can set up tangent ratios, and I can solve for a missing leg, and I can solve for a missing angle. All right, the old idea is any pair of triangles, we've already talked about similar triangles, any pair of triangles with an acute angle are the same. Wait, no, not they're not the same. Any pair of triangles with an acute angle that is the same and a right angle would be similar by angle and angle, which is that AA similar theorem. Angle, angle, similar. Therefore, the ratio of the legs in these triangles would be equal. So if you compared this to this and this to this, they would be equal. So for example, if this was 6 and this was 12 and this was 3 and this was 6, then the ratio of those sides, 6 is to 12 as 3 is to 6, would need to be the same. And that's 1 half to 1 half. I just made up some numbers really quick. Okay, so... That's where trig came, it comes into play now, that all right triangles that have a 90-degree angle have three special ratios that can be written using the lengths of the sides. We're going to start with the tangent ratio today. The tangent ratio is defined as you go to the angle, not the right angle. You go to the tangent of an angle in a right triangle is the opposite leg compared to the adjacent leg. And it's usually written opposite to adjacent or off to adjacent, that's another abbreviation, and we might even say O over A. Okay, now, before I do any problems here, I want you to open your eyes and to the page that says the tangent ratio. So there's a really great picture there of a little stick figure guy, better than I draw them, and he's looking at this angle right there, and that little symbol means, or that is red, theta. You don't have, it's not a big deal knowing that that's theta, but that's just a Greek letter, so it's just like a variable. It is a Greek letter. They use theta and beta and alpha, etc. in trig. So, just so you know that that's theta, this would be an angle measure. So this guy's looking at this angle, right here, the one that's in between there, theta. And he's saying, well, the tangent ratio is the opposite leg to that angle, so this would be opposite that angle, and I'm going to color that green. And it's the opposite leg compared to next to him, where he's standing next to theta, would be the adjacent leg. This would be the adjacent leg. Oh, okay, so it's opposite to adjacent or... Oopsie, I just circled that incorrectly with the wrong color. So it would be opposite over adjacent. And remembering that adjacent is when, the one that's attached to the angle, and opposite is the one that's not. Now, you might say, well, what about this thing? Well, that's more specifically what? That's a special. It's not a leg at all. It's the hypotenuse, and you better know that's the hypotenuse of that right triangle. So, the tangent ratio does not involve the hypotenuse at all. The tangent ratio for right triangle is defined as the opposite length, um, side length to the angle divided by the adjacent side length to the angle. If we have several right triangles with the same reference angle, meaning if this angle is the same measurement, then all of them will have that, the ratio will come out the same. And regardless, once you reduce it, it would come out the same. So, here we go. Your calculator is amazing in that it has all of this stuff programmed into it. But first, you're not going to calculate with a calculator at all right now. Not until we get down here. So these, it says, write the tangent ratio for the requested angle. Angle B, it says, I want the tangent of B. So here's what you need to learn to do. You go to angle B. That's like where the man was standing. I'm going to put an eyeball there. Like you're looking out. Okay? You know what I mean by an eyeball, right? Okay, so he's looking that way. And if you're looking this way, the side opposite would be the 5. And what would the adjacent leg be? It has to be a leg, not the hypotenuse. So this right here would be your opposite leg 
to that angle over here where angle B was is your adjacent leg. That's your adjacent leg. So since it's opposite over adjacent, it's 5 over 12. And that doesn't reduce. So we'll leave it 5 twelfths. I kind of made a mess there, but I didn't really mean to cover up your B, but I want you guys to understand where that angle is. Angle B is the space between the 12 and the 13. Okay, but the sides are segments. Okay, and this was where we were looking from. Oh, my eyeball looks weird. Okay, the tangent of E. So now I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to be like I'm standing here and looking that way. Okay, so I'm looking across which makes the 12 here be my opposite leg and the adjacent leg would be the 9 the side with 9 on it that would be adjacent the legs make the right angle that's why we're working with those right now because we're doing the tangent so tangent is 12 over 9 and then we need to reduce that and you can divide both of those by 3 which would be 4 thirds so you have to know what angle you're coming from to be able to write the ratio properly. So write a tangent ratio for each triangle and solve. Now I'm going to show you how to solve for a missing piece. So we go to the figure and we see what you have given. There's a 41 degree angle. There is a leg labeled X and a leg labeled 14. The hypotenuse is here. So that's your hypotenuse and there's nothing on it. Okay. So what you want to do is go to the 41 degree angle. Never start at the 90 and say, okay, I'm looking from here. I don't know why my eyeballs bulge so much, but they're, they're there. Okay, I'm looking from here. So as I'm looking, I look out from the 41 and I see across from it the X. That will be my opposite leg. Next to it, Right by the eyeball starts the side that is called the adjacent leg. So with that in mind, I set up the ratio. I say, okay, the tangent of the angle, which is 41, tangent of 41 equals opposite X over adjacent 14. We've been doing proportions recently, and this we're going to treat like a proportion. So I'm just going to stick a 1 under my tan 41. I'm going to look at this and say, well, I'm going to do my cross products property. So I'm going to do 1 times x, which would be x. And then I'm going to do 14 times the tangent of 41. Okay, so I need to calculate 14 tan 41. So you grab your calculator. And you say, wait a minute, I'm doing trigonometry today, and Ms. Heimer told me, what I'm about to tell you. So this is what you need to do first when you come in and start working with these calcs that you're borrowing in particular, or a home calc. You need to check the mode. If it's not in the right mode, you're going to get all your answers wrong. Okay? So you need to take and hit that mode button up here. This you will see. And I bet someone in the room has it looking like, well... Uh, anybody got this highlighted right here? This thing called radians? That's a problem. Okay? It needs to be in degrees. All right? So would you please go arrow to that radian thing and then turn right, uh, arrow to the right, and hit enter and get it set to degree mode. All right? You, ought to, you also would like to have it on normal and float if it's not. Okay. Just see if it's set like I have it. Are you all good? All right. So let's try it and we'll make the calculation. So what you want to type is 14 tangent of 41, and you don't even have to hit times. So let's get out of here by hitting second quit. Let's get you back to your home screen. Hit 14 tangent 41. Just like that, hit enter. You get 12.17. Let's round to the nearest tenth and get 
Anybody not get 12.2? How do you do what? You got it? Okay, as long as you're getting 12.2. I want to make sure everybody's able to calculate it. So it's a critical point here that you are actually opening a calculator and working on this. All right, let's set up the next one. I'm going to stand here and you're looking at the 71 degrees coming from here with your eyeball. Okay, across from it would be the side labeled with a 20. That's your opposite side. And next to it is the adjacent side. I don't know why I wrote a D. It looks like a, a, a that looked like a D, so I'll rewrite it. ADJ. That's your adjacent side. So this would be tangent of 71 equals opposite 20. I don't know why that 20 is way up there. Um, over X. Now, this will not calculate like the last one. It's, you're still going to do the same process, but what you type in will not be times. If we multiply across, we're going to get x times the tangent of 71 equals 1 times 20, which is 20. So we have another step on this one. We need to divide both sides by tangent of 71. So now what we do to type in x is to get x is type in 20 divided by the tangent of 71. And hit enter. You get 6.88, which rounds to 6.9. Okay. Everybody understand how to calculate that and getting 6.9. If you don't, tell me now. What part? Okay, so you see why it's 20 divided by tangent 71? So we type 20 divided by tangent 71. Okay, and then you should be getting the 6 point. You got that now? Good. All right, number, t uh, well, whatever number it is, it's the next one. All right, we're starting at the angle that's 42 degrees. That's where we're looking from. So we look and we say opposite that 42 is your x and adjacent is the 16. So we say tangent of 42 equals x over 16. This kind, we do do multiplication. 1 times x is equal to 16 times the tangent of 42. So type 16, tangent 42. Fourteen point four. Okay, believe that's it on the ISM for today. Move on to the packet, please. You can, of course, leave your tangent page and your ISN open. It says, write the tangent ratio as a fraction and then as a decimal for each of the following. <coughs> tangent of A, so now we're standing here. So I'm looking this way. Opposite. Next to it would be adjacent. And it's the legs you're working with. This one's your hypotenuse. You're not working with that one. So the tangent is opposite which will be 4 over adjacent, which is 3, 4 thirds. To convert it to a decimal, you would type one, 4 divided by 3 and get 1.3 repeating. Okay, if you would like, do you want me to color these with the opposites? It's okay if I just, I mean, I could do this, I guess, cross from them. All right, now the next one says the tangent of W. So we're going to be standing at angle W. As we are looking out with our big eyes, we look across from it. This would be your opposite leg. This where the 13 is is the biggest side, and it's the hypotenuse. Ignore it. Next to it is your adjacent leg next to the angle W. So you might, if you like to do the arrows like this, you can show that if you want. Uh, 5 over 12. Now, what's that as a decimal? 0.416. 
and the six repeats, right? Now, if we're going over here to angle T, we're standing there, looking out, and I see across from it and adjacent to it, so this would be opposite, this is adjacent, 8 fifteenths. And I don't know that decimal point, 5 with the 3 repeating, okay. Any questions on this? All right, number, the next part. All the tangent ratios for a particular size angle are the same. In other words, in any right triangle that has a 40 degree angle, um, it has the same tangent decimal ratio as another one that's bigger or in, because they're proportional. All of these answers are in your calculator. Make sure your modes and degree, which we already did. And then type the degree into the calculator and record the decimal ratios to the nearest three places. So we're gonna do tan 60. <clears throat> and we're going to write down the decimal to three places, so that's going to be 1.732. Okay, I'm going to type tan 32. You guys will be faster than me on this. 0.624, uh oh, 0.625 if you round correctly. And tan 86. Fourteen point three zero zero uh oh fourteen point three zero one. There was a six after the second zero. All right, now what do these mean? Well, we're comparing the opposite leg to the adjacent leg. Opposite over adjacent. So you're comparing the length of the opposite leg to the adjacent leg. I thought maybe you'd like to know why these numbers are what they are. So I'm going to quick just make an explanation and then move on. This has a 60 degree angle and a 90 degree angle in this triangle, which means the third one was 30. But what the tangent of 60 means is the side across from that 60, the opposite leg to the 60, is 1.732 times as big as the adjacent leg. It's bigger. Here, the tangent of 32, that means the leg across from that little angle would be smaller, 62.5% of the adjacent leg. And then this one, oh my goodness, the tangent of 86. Why is it so huge? It's because the opposite leg compared to the adjacent leg would be, the opposite leg is 143% or 14.3 times, no, 143% was incorrect, that would be one. 1,430% actually, it's 14.3 times as big as the adjacent leg. So this is what it would look like. So let me show you this one. Because you already know it's got a right, you don't have to draw this. You have already know it's got a right angle, right? And you already know that it's got an 86. So that means this angle way up here at the tippy top would be how big? Triangle angle sum theorem, guys. 180 minus 90 is 90. 90 minus 86 is 4. This is only be 4 degrees up there. Okay, and what this means is that the side that's 80, this would be your 86 degree angle, that the side opposite the 86 would be 14, say, 0.321 with the other side. This one is that much bigger than this one. That's where that decimal comes from. So I know that's a weird looking triangle, but that's why it's so, so, this is so big. All right, you won't remember that probably, so let's just go on. So if you did appreciate that, you kind of know why the numbers are what they are. That's all I wanted to tell you. All right, so we're going to set this up. Here we are. We're looking from here. We have green eyes this time. We're going opposite <laughs> over adjacent. So this would be set up. The tangent of 52 equals x over 15. The calculation, thinking of it as a proportion, is going to be 15 times the tangent of 52. That's going to give us x. Right, you grab your calculator, you do 15 tan 52. And you get 19.2, which would be to the nearest 10. I don't like these words in my way. The second one, you go to the angle that's given. It's the 42 degrees. 
you look across and say that's the side opposite it. And the one next to it has an x on it. That's your adjacent leg. So the tangent of 42 equals 8 over x, which is calculated a little differently than the last one. You do your cross products property and get x times the tangent of 42 equals 8. Then you need to divide both sides by the tangent of 42. So x equals 8 divided by the tangent of 42. And dividing by some decimal, you get 8.888. So you'll round that to 8.9 if we're going to the nearest tenth. Okay, on the next one, you're looking from the 74. Across from 74 would be your opposite leg. Next to it would be your adjacent leg. This one's the hypotenuse and we're not using it. Tangent of 74 equals x over 56. Cross products, 1 times x, x equals 56 times the tangent of 74. I figured I had some room up here, I should have used it. And then I can get my answer by just typing. Okay, 195.3 this time. Obviously, these drawings are not to scale. Okay, looking at 11. I already put an H on the hypotenuses. I am going to be asking you what the ratio of the tangent of X would be. So if you're standing up here, what is the tangent of X? Pardon? Alright, opposite would be 3, adjacent would be 3, 3 over 3, which equals 1. So what happens when you go over to the Y and you look from there? Now you're getting the opposite is a different side over adjacent, but you're still getting 3 over 3, which is 1. Look at the numbers on this thing and think about what we were doing yesterday. What kind of triangle is this? What is kind of triangle does it have to be? One, it's isosceles, right? It's isosceles in a right triangle, which means these angles are both equal, which makes them each 45. This is a 45, 45, 90. Now I'm going to show you something. We're going to learn in a few minutes how to find angles. If you would do find an angle, you, what you do is you hit second tangent <coughs> and you undo the tangent. You go like this, second tan. If you put in 1, which is what we had, you're going to get 45. That's the angle measure. Don't worry about that right now. I just thought I'd point it out. Now, check this one out. If you look at the numbers, I bet you know what kind of triangle this is. All right, let's see. Go to the angle G. The tangent of G will be 8 over 8 root 3. Now, i got to reduce by those those 8, so I'm going to have to have, reduce it to 1 over the square root of 3. And then if I do tangent of t, I'm coming from up here now. The opposite leg will be 8 square roots of 3, and the adjacent leg will be 8. Okay, you've got to know which side you're coming from, or which angle you're coming from. So this would reduce to the square root of 3. But if I look at those numbers, do you guys know from yesterday what kind of triangle that is? Yeah, because 2 times 8 is 16, and 8 times the square root of 3 is here. That would be a 30, 60, 90. Okay, I just thought I'd point that out since we were doing special right triangles yesterday. This one, nothing to do with it. If we want to do the tangent of P, we're going to stand here at angle P, and we're going to look out. And we're going to say, okay, 7 is opposite that, and adjacent, this one's the hypotenuse, don't use it, would be 24. And the tangent of Q, if I'm standing over here and looking out, the opposite side's 24, the adjacent's 7.
So these are reciprocals of one another when you come from the opposite, other angle. They gotta flip over. Okay, write the tangent equation using the label figure, angle for each figure, excuse me, solve and round your answer to the nearest tenth. So, first problem. We are coming from the 30 degree angle. The X is your opposite leg and the 100 is your adjacent. So the tangent of 30 equals X over 100. Treat it like a proportion and solve. So X is 100 times the tangent of 30. Is anybody ahead of me? thought maybe someone might be. 57.7 if we're going to the nearest tenth, and that's what it's said to do. And if it's labeled, we'll label, but that one's not. We won't label till we get to 16. So number 15 is going to be the tangent of 70 equals x over 18. So x equals 18 times the tangent of 70. at 49.5. Okay, and for 16, looking from the 55 degree angle, opposite is the X, adjacent is the 4. So the tangent of 55 equals X over 4. Well, all of these had easy calculations which were just multiplying instead of dividing. 4 tan 55 and we got 5.7 and that one should be labeled in centimeters. I would like to skip 17, 18, 90, I'd skip the next few here, because I want to show you quick how to find the angles before we get closer to time, and I need to give you your review for the quiz tomorrow. We're having a quiz tomorrow with Pythagorean Theorem, uh, Special Right Triangles, and Simplifying Radicals. Okay. If you know, you can also find the angles. Let me just show you that when you're looking for missing angles, we're going to use the inverse sine, cosine, or tangent. And that's when you use your second button. Okay? Your calculator is programmed to find all these angle measures. So here's what you do. You're like you're undoing the tangent. So what you're hitting on your calculator, it's going to look like this. You're going to hit angle A is equal to, you're going to hit tan second tangent. And then you're going to put in this decimal. That's exactly what it'll look like. So it'll go second, tan. Put in the point. Now I forgot the number. 6427. Okay. 32.7. And that is the angle measure. So it said to the nearest tenth of degree, so 32.7 degrees. Now, we have not learned about the sine and the cosine, but we will be in a couple of days. The sine, if you're finding an angle measure, though, you do it the same way. You just hit second, this time hit the sine button, and put in the decimal, which I forgot to read what it was. Is it point, point nine nine seven five six? Thank you. Okay, and that's 85.996. We'd have to round that to 86 degrees. These need to have degrees on them because we're talking about angles now. And for the la next one, we're going to hit second tangent. 1.0, just two zeros, right? Wait. 1.60033. Zero, zero, three, three. 57.999, that's be 58 degrees. And the last one, second cosine, 0.97, was it 0.9?
and I got 13.8, so that'd be 13.9 if you rounded to the tenth. <clears throat> okay, these, you're just the same thing. You just plug in, um, you do the same thing, except these are just fractions. So you hit second, tangent, 4 divided by 5. Yes. Oh, did I put that in wrong? What was the angle measure? Oh, it was 14 even? Oh, sorry about that. So when I do the second tangent of four-fifths, I do get 38.6 or 38.7. Okay, so you're telling me I typed my, I didn't put, oh, yeah, I see what I did. I listened to, so it should have been 14? Okay. Okay, um, here's the review. I got to give it to you, so I just wanted to give it to you in advance. I will go over the review uh, prior to the quiz tomorrow.